All right, following on from the Arthropods 2 video, we're going to continue looking at some of the orders. I would like you to know this term, order isopoda, okay, isopods. These ones are flattened from the top to the bottom, dorso, kind of dorso, ventrally from top to bottom. bottom. And they're very interesting uh, because you'll find these um, in huge diversity in many different species of these, and they tend to be smallish, um, but uh, common in the environments that we're going to be looking in, and they act as some very interesting, with some very interesting lifestyles like parasitic lifestyles. Here we go. Here is what you're looking at as a, um, uh, a flattened, dorsoventrally flattened organism. So you can still see one pair of antenna, two pairs of antenna. Um, there is a carapace, okay, over the um, cephalothorax and then the abdomen. And you still see a telson and uropods here too. Okay, isopods. They take on lots and lots of different body forms. Here you go, you've got uh, little eyes, one, two, uh, antennas, okay, but flattened from top to bottom. Here's that one that we saw before. You can see it's carapace, and segmented carapace, and then the abdomen down here, okay, and that is uh, the parasite. Um, you can, one of the interesting things about these isopods is there's one you may have found if you're a fisherman inside uh, mouths of kawai or jack mackerel and these things will actually get into the mouth of these, uh, these fish, eat their tongue, but live inside the mouth and act as the fish's tongue where they can um, also um, pick up pieces of the, of the fish, of the diet that the fish catches and live that way. So that's a horrible parasite, but uh, it doesn't actually kill the fish. All right, amphipods. Let's look at amphipods. So amphipods are sandhoppers. All right. Uh, they are very similar to the isopods, but instead of being dorsoventrally compressed or flattened, they are laterally compressed or flattened. So they go from side, uh, they're squeezed from side to side. So here's your typical sand hopper um, with a, a um, segmented carapace over the cephalothorax, uh, the antennas, and uh, abdomen down here. Okay, and interesting thing about these things, one of the interesting things about these things, they come in lots and lots of varieties but the abdomen tucks under. Here you can see where the, um, uh, the uh, telson and uropods are tucked under. There you go, another crazy looking amphipod. There's another one, big telson and uropods. Here's another one, telson and uropods tucked under. And here's another one that uh, on top of a bryozoan, a lace coral, okay, and also a hydrozoan. So three different phyla. And so why these things are called sand hoppers is this telson and uropods, you can see they're modified for a big grip. And what happens is they tuck them under and then they flick and spring backwards. They flick with this muscular abdomen and they can throw themselves up in the air um, the ones on the beach, you can get them uh, throwing themselves something like 600 times their body length. So that's, a, that's essentially throwing yourself further than a couple of football fields by um, jumping. Um, they are benthic, planktonic, parasitic, uh, uh, grazers, uh, tritivores. They live in lots and lots of different ways. There's a very diverse species, um, type of animal. All right, let's look at the maxillopods, the cirripeds. All right, cirripeds, these are barnacles. And cirri means feathered, and ped means foot. 
They don't have feathers. It means it's just means feathers. Okay. If I ask you uh, if what barnacles use to uh, gather their food, don't say feathers. All right. And those are the thoracic limbs or the periopods. All uh, right. They are only most of the body form uh, features of crustaceans are only uh, visible in the larval stage uh, uh, when they, uh, for example, their antenna. Um, but then they settle themselves and glue themselves to the substrate. These are um, barnacles, and then build a little shell around themselves. So there are two types. Types you've got the encrusting, and you've got the stalked or the goose barnacles. So these ones you tend to find on places like uh, on things that are floating around in the open ocean, and then these ones, of course, are limited to uh, attaching to substrate very often in intertidal areas. Uh, this, they make this other shell around them. This is not the exoskeleton, but it's rather a calcium carbonate shell that they that is in pieces. It's either six or eight pieces uh, that goes around their body. There's the rostrum, the lateral um, portions, the carina, which is the back portion, or the whole thing is really called the carina. This whole thing is called the carina. And then they've got two trap doors. The aperture is the area in between the middle of them. That's the opening, just like we saw in shellfish. And then there is the two, these two doors that open and close, the tergum and scutum. Okay, so this is not the exoskeleton. This is a separate uh, calcium carbonate shell that they make around themselves and then they live inside this thing. It's, uh, these things aren't attached, they're jointed so this thing can expand as it grows. But uh, once it gets to a certain stage, it stops growing. And here's what the animal looks like inside. Essentially, it's just a big bag of guts. And then what remains is the modified thoracic appendages or periopods which go out and uh, as the, ter the scutum and the tergum uh, open, that's these, these trap doors open, these things, these um, modified appendages go out and just uh, like they stroke through the, air, the water column picking up particulate matter. And let's have a look at it. So, We'll have a look at the uh, CRI in a second on the next video, but they also um, have the are known as the animal with the largest, the longest penis to body size ratio of any animal on the planet, and that's because they're sessile; they can't move to um, impregnate other ones, and they don't broadcast spawn; they actually um, copulate. So they have to be able to extend their uh, their copulatory organ from one to the next. So it has to be very long. But there you can see the CRI, which are the modified thoracic appendages. They're, they have um, a, an exoskeleton which molts and is shedded from time to time. And you can see the little um, uh, way these things are feathered out in order to strain the water column of particles. Finally, the copiapods, all right, very important because they also, like the uh, krill, these are ones are worldwide and they are um, probably the most important link between primary producers and other larger fish, uh, larger uh, fish populations, populations that would be a fish that would be too small to see the individual uh, the individual photosynthetic plankton, but can see these copiapods that feed on the plankton. All right. So this is what they look like. They've got a single eye spot. They're the model for a plankton from SpongeBob. And they've got, they actually have two sets of antennas, just like all the other copiapods. What they don't have is a set of appendages on the abdomen. There we go.
go. There's a nice picture of the, here's the cephalothorax, right? And here's the cephalothorax. And then here's the abdomen, okay? And no appendages on the abdomen. But otherwise, the same uh, general body plan of all the other crustaceans. And here's a nice scanning electron micrograph of one that's brooding its eggs, it's carrying its eggs. All right, so these things, most of them are probably planktonic and um, feed on primary producing algae, as we've said. Uh, but uh, there are quite a few benthic varieties and they uh, carry on lots and lots of different lifestyles um, as we've seen in, in lots of the different arthropod diversity. Okay, so there's huge diversity in all these different orders. And um, I would like you to know the term copiapoda as well. So this is another one that you'll need to recognize, copepods. Okay, so that's it for the arthropods videos. Um, thank you.